So I recently made an interesting discovery in Photoshop. Now, uh, one of the things I like to do often is I'll take an image, whether it's an abstract image like this one or even a photograph, and just go in and start blindly applying different filters in Photoshop to the image to see what kind of results I get. Now, oftentimes, it just will give you nothing, and you just hit cancel and continue on. But every now and then, you're going to stumble upon a filter or an effect that really kind of gives you something that you really didn't expect. And you just kind of take it to the next level and then the next level, and it eventually will evolve into something rather interesting. This is one of those examples where I'm going to take this abstract image here and turn it into kind of like a silky background that you would use like in a jewelry ad or something like that. And this was done simply by experimenting with filters in Photoshop. So all you're going to do in this case is simply go to filter, go to blur, and do a Gaussian blur. A very small two pixel blur just to take care of some of the edge details. So I'm going to smooth that out a little bit more. So we'll click OK. Then we're going to go to filter again and this time go to sketch and choose chrome. And you can immediately see right away it starts to look like it's like bunched up fabric, almost like satin sheets or something like that. So that's looking kind of cool. So if you can play with these settings here, I'm going to drop the detail. I want to keep the detail relatively low to keep that smooth look. In fact, let's go ahead and drop it down to zero. I had it at one, but let's go ahead and keep it at zero. So the detail down to zero. Smoothness, I'm going to keep it up really high at the highest setting so it gives me that nice smooth look to it. And that's all there is to it. So click OK, and there we have it. So now we need to give it some color and some life and everything like that because it's not quite looking like I want it to, but we're headed in the right direction. So first thing is I'm going to unlock this background layer. I'm going to hold down the Option key and double click on it. Unlocks that layer. I'm going to hold down the Command key on Mac, Control on Windows, and click on the new layer icon here at the bottom of the Layers panel, and it drops a new layer underneath my currently active layer. So now we're going to go up here into the color swatches. I'm just going to get this red color here and fill that background in there. Now I'm going to do something different here. I'm actually going to fill it with a gradient. So let's turn off this layer for the moment. So we're on that back, uh, background layer. Let's get this red color here. So in here in the toolbar, I've got red as my foreground color and black as the background color. So we're going to go ahead and use the gradient tool. And we'll just use the first one, which is foreground to, or foreground to background, rather. And I'm just going to start right here in the more to the right side of the image and just draw out the gradient. Let's make sure we're getting it at full opacity here. There we go. There we go. So it's going on a nice red, uh, red to black gradient. So now I have this image above. And all we're going to do with this layer is simply change the blend mode to overlay. And voila, we've got nice satin red sheets, whatever you want to call it. It's very sexy, I think. But looking pretty good. Now, what I want to do here at this point is increase some of the highlight areas around, or, you know, some certain points that uh, catch the light a little differently. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make a duplicate of that overlay layer and then change the blend mode from overlay to screen. So now we're only seeing the highlighted areas. But notice we're seeing too much of those highlighted areas. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and uh, do a levels adjustment on this since it is merely a black and white image that we're looking at on this layer. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Layers panel. Let's go to Image, Adjustment, Levels. Not the Layers. Did I say Layers panel? I meant Levels. And we're going to take the black eyedropper tool and just click in a light area of the image. Not in any of these highlights. What we're trying to do is enhance the highlights on the folds here. So in just in any uh, uh, open area, just click once. And that will set that area to black, making it invisible since the layer is in screen mode. So I'm just going to move this midtone slider just to kind of lighten those up a little bit. Now we're getting nice highlights on the image. Now if it seems still too intense, it almost takes on kind of a liquidy look here, which is if that's what you're going for, that's great. But I'm going to drop the opacity of that layer down considerably. Let's take it down to around 50%. So we're getting nice little highlights on the fabric or what looks like fabric here. And that looks pretty good. So now let's add our final elements. So we're going to take this necklace, which I've already extracted, and I'm going to go ahead and take it and drag and drop it into my layout here. And we'll just kind of scale it, put it in place here. I think I want to actually turn it a little bit. Let's kind of position that right about there. So it's already starting to look like one of those classy jewelry ads. 
So I'm going to put a little, a, bit of a little bit of a levels adjustment on this necklace just to kind of increase the color and contrast of it, kind of match the scene here. Let's just boost that up a little bit there. It looks better. And, of course, we need the shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and um, command or control click right on that necklace, makes an active selection of the shape. And then once again, let's put a new layer underneath this active layer. So I'm going to go ahead and command click on the layer, on the new layer icon, puts a new layer underneath. And normally we fill shadows with black, but in this case I'm just going to sample the darker red color of this image and go ahead and fill that selection with that color. So if I turn off that layer above, you can see that there it is filled with that color. Then we're going to go ahead and take that layer and put it in multiply blend mode. And then let's go ahead and put a blur on it. We'll put about a three pixel blur on it, I think. And then we'll just simply drop the opacity of it down. Now, normally you'd simply move the shadow off to the side to offset it a little bit. But in this case, I'm going to do something different. I'm actually going to put it in warp. So with the shadow layer selected, I'm going to put it in free transform mode. Press command or control T. Then I'm going to right click right on the object in here and go and choose warp. And this allows me to really kind of push certain areas of the shadow wherever I want it to be. So in, the, in, this, in this sense, we've got a very uneven surface that it's casting a shadow on. So the shadow wouldn't necessarily be perfect as it falls upon that surface. So we're just going to kind of distort that shadow a little bit, giving it more realistic um, placement. There we go. So that looks pretty good. And then you just simply add a small text element here. We'll just call it elegant because it's elegant. It went from a wildly colored abstract, abstract background to a more elegant, to do the Trojan Pro because it's very classy. Let's fill that with white. And there we have classy, elegant background made from that abstract image we saw earlier. So the whole point is here is to think about filters and open up images that you would probably never even think about, even texture files, anything you've got, run some filters on it and it might turn it into something you didn't expect, but you're never gonna know unless you go in there and actually try it. So just take some time, just kind of go in there, just fool around with Photoshop. Don't have anything specific in mind, just go in there without any real thought, but go in there with an open mind looking at it and paying attention to what results you get, and you could turn out something rather interesting. One more bonus thing about this with the fabric here. Let me go ahead and take this like that. If you select both layers, what you can do is go over here and do a distort and change the look of the overall pattern just by distorting it instead of scaling it. You can get rather interesting perspectives on it which ultimate result in something like that. Pretty cool stuff.